Last year, this was a log landing. They worked this particular forest for maybe two years, starting in the winter three years ago. And so, this was literally, and I'll show you a little bit of video on what it looked like, but we had piles of logs here that were 40 feet high. And now, the loggers are gone. They did a selective harvest. And what they really did was create a much better forest than the forest that they had found when they started their logging. We're seeing a regenerating forest before our eyes. And you can see right here is something that uh, opening up the canopy allowed to occur. A native, awesome wildflower and crop here. This is Jerusalem artichoke. And more than any other North American plant, you get more yield per acre from Jerusalem artichoke than anything else, including maize. So the forest being opened up has created habitat for Jerusalem artichokes, as you can see here, to really start taking hold. And these, these grow by tubers spreading in the soil. So I can imagine we're going to have a lot of them in this disturbed soil before the invasives take hold. Because invasives, as you know, like disturbed soil. I can expect to see some bitter sweet here pretty quick and the like. But right now, I'm excited to see the Jerusalem artichoke stay here. So what I'm going to do is I'm basically walking around. We're going to check out the regrowth of the forest and maybe find some mushrooms or other forageables here on this week's episode of Fishing Historic Places. The road I'm walking up here not many years ago was a tar road. It's been discontinued and you can see the asphalt has literally crumbled into almost nothing. And there were telephone poles here. Since the loggers, I haven't walked up the road to see if there's any left. There was a pole here, and you can see the metal fixture on that stump sprouted split oak right there. And this area has been logged out multiple times. Now, the last time this was logged was the end of the box board cut back in the 50s, and it's regrown. And what they did here, and you can see a logging road over there, you see that regrowth. So what they did is they zigzagged through with their skitter and their feather buncher. Basically, two guys from Quebec worked this entire area. And that's what modern logging is like. It would have taken a crew of guys. They would have probably built a cookhouse down there. They would have had a, a barn for the horses. Back in the old days, which isn't that long ago in terms of logging, they would have literally set up a camp. And there, would have got, there would have been guys that stayed here all year long. Today they can do it much quicker. And while it seems industrial to us, it's actually a lot less harmful to the forest to have people in here for less time. Behind me here you can see an old telephone pole. And like I'm telling you, this was a tar road. <laughs> You wouldn't know it now. It shows you how fast nature will reclaim its own. And we have this idea that once the black top goes down, it's never coming back. So the world and nature is curtailed forever. But it's us really that are just passing through. No matter how much we might want to think that we're dominating this planet, nature's stronger. Cool as I walk along, we're looking at a forest that was cut. And you can see there's holes in the canopy. But you can also see that they left these two beautiful black birch right here to grow and get bigger. Who knows? It'll be cut again in 30 or 40 years or not. But this is different logging than the logging that was done in New England and the other forest clearances. This is quite a slope that I'm trudging up. It might be that this is going to be better for my friends, the mushrooms, 
next year. This year is a kind of a catch your breath year. But with all the wood down, I can really imagine we're going to have a lot of mushrooms here. So you can see I'm on the side of quite a hill. You can see the distant mountains there. And yet right here, you can see the remains of a late 19th century construction. And this is a real nice piece of, st of stonework. Look at the care. Look at that beautiful work here. And there's a cellar hole nearby, obviously. But these guys who did this, they weren't just building a stone wall. They were creating a little bit of art. It's really amazing. I'm giving myself credit for a nice find here. The loggers cleared it out so I could get in here. You can see the uh, grapevines all over. The grapevines are a sign of a nearby cellar hole. Where? I don't know. I would imagine pretty close to this gate, though. We're not on a cellar hole expedition here. Look at that, huh? Dry stone construction, too. No mortar. That is amazing. What were they thinking? So up above the stone wall that I showed you, we can look out and see regrowth. And the problem I'm looking at right there, you can see burning bush out there. Burning bush is an invasive. So we've got burning bush, and that can create thickets. The best management here would be a good old forest fire, but that isn't going to happen. So hopefully these things aren't going to get out of control and that we're going to get a good regrowth that doesn't, uh, doesn't show us what invasives we have in our area. You can see here, as we're getting near the top of the hill, away from the river, we've got a lot of oak, and then you can see beach. And these poor beaches are suffering from the beach bark and the beach leaf disease. You can see these beaches turning brown. You can see the sunlight getting through the canopy here. It's pretty sad what's happening to our beaches. So some of these look more healthy than a lot of them I've seen. I've noticed that the higher elevation you get, the more likely you are to find healthy beaches. So it could be that either of those diseases is altitudinally specific. Here's another one. Look at this thing. They were having some fun up here, weren't they? You can see that cherry standing on that rock outcrop, tied into the stone wall, showing us where our friends the sheep were doing their thing once upon a time. Oh, what a find. Look right here. We got some barbed wire coiled around this tree. A reminder that human invention changes everything. So that the stone walls up here didn't have to get rebuilt after probably 1880. 18, well, let's go 1890 when the invention diffused back east into New England. Because originally that, that barbed wire was big out west. And look right there. Barrel hoops. So we are pretty darn close to a cellar hole. We have barrel hoops. And oh, I think I see where the cellar hole is right there. It's always cool finding these things. It's always cool just stumbling around in the woods, right? But when you find the remains of human habitation, like look what we got. We got sugar maples. Boom, boom. They're not huge. They are sugar maples. And there's a stone wall 
and we get the little swale here and then right here stone wall oh here it is wow spectacular I get to show you a fresh find oh